Hello and welcome to our career interview with Dr. Amelia Persico. Joining me today for this interview is Jaden Burke. We will jump right in and Dr. Persico, if you could start by telling us about the journey that you've taken to get to where you are today. Sure, so I'm a clinical pharmacist and I started my education at Brandeis University near Boston, Massachusetts. Um, I was there for a year and a half before realizing that I wanted to pursue pharmacy school instead. So I transferred to Albany College of Pharmacy, which is right nearby in Albany. Um, and I spent six years there in the Doctor of Pharmacy program. And while I was there, I also took classes at Union Graduate College, which is now known as Clarkson University. Um, I think it's Clarkson University Capital Region Campus. Um, and I got a master's in business administration there. Um, and then I did two years of residency. So the first year of residency was at the VA hospital in Albany. And the second year of residency was at the VA hospital as well, but I spent most of the time in their pain clinic focusing on pain management. Wow. In all those education experiences, because you have so many, which is incredible, <laughs> is there something that stands out to you, whether it was a course or a project or one of your residency? Was there something that stands out that thinking back in that moment, you were like, wow, I'm on the path that fits for me and this is working? Oh, goodness. Um, honestly, I think that the first time that I, that I realized that I wanted to go into something in the science or medical field um, was actually when I was in high school taking AP biology. That was the first time that I realized that would be the right fit for me. So I think just going on through the classes in college and everything just reinforced that, yes, I'm still on the right path. This is still something that inspires and excites me. Awesome. So in your current job, tell us about what is a typical day look like for you? Yeah, so I actually just started a new job on January 4th. So I can tell you all about what that's like. Um, it's really exciting. I'm working for a specialty pharmacy company now um, and I actually get to work from home. So I'm here in my home office right now and I do um, telephonic patient care. So all of my encounters with patients are over the phone, which is really exciting, not only because of the pandemic, but because I can reach the patients when they're at home in their own environment, living their lives. And it makes it a lot easier in my mind um, to, to get a feel for what their lives are like and how they manage their medications. So um, specialty pharmacy is a subset of pharmacy and it focuses on medications or diseases that are more difficult for people to manage. So a lot of the medications we deal with are injectable medications where the patients have to give themselves a shot um, every day or once a week or you know different things. Um, and another big area is oncology or cancer medications. So we work a lot with patients who are dealing with um, side effects from chemotherapy. So again, it's really beneficial that we can just reach them in their homes because um, they may not be up for getting out necessarily. Um, and it's just one less appointment that um, some pretty sick patients have to deal with. So that being said, um, a day in the life right now is uh, walking down the hall to my home office, uh, <laughs> logging into the computer system, um, getting in touch with my colleagues. We all touch base, um, you know, within the first 15 minutes or so of starting the day, and we divide up our work for the day. So my team is at the NYU Langone Hospital down in New York City, um, and we all work remotely right now. So. Um, myself and another team member are actually right here in the Albany area. There's a few people in the Boston area. Um, excuse me. And I think everyone else is down closer to the city. Um, they live in Brooklyn and the Bronx, things like that. So we touch base in the morning, divide up our work for the day. Um, and then we just get going. We work up our patients, take a look at their um, medical charts. So we, we access the NYU medical record right from our homes. Um, take a look at their histories and everything, and, and then we give them a call. So it's a pretty cool role. I get to have access to, like I said, their medical record and also their pharmacy record. So um, it's, it's been really interesting so far. Great. Thank you. What do you love most about your job? I think, I think my favorite part, like I said, I just started this one, um, but I think my favorite part is the fact that I get to reach the patient's 
in their homes um, while they're just kind of going about their daily lives. But with pharmacy in general, because I've worked in a few different areas, you know, um, my favorite thing about pharmacy in general is that we're a super accessible medical professional. So, you know, if you've ever tried to call your doctor's office, it's usually a matter of like leaving a message, waiting for them to call you back. And that can take a lot of back and forth with phone tag and stuff. But with a pharmacist, it, we're really easy to reach. You can most times call a pharmacist directly, whether it's like at your local drugstore or in this case, your specialty pharmacist. So I love that we're super accessible to people. And the next question is, what kind of skills do you need for your job? So like soft skills or trainable skills? Yeah, so some of the soft skills um, for, for the jobs that I've done would definitely be communication skills, um, being able to engage the patients um, and being able to answer their questions and work with the patient themselves or their caregivers sometimes. And also a lot of collaborating with um, physicians and nurse practitioners. So needing to have those people skills to work together, teamwork, collaboration, things like that are really important. Um, the trainable or like the teachable skills, um, you need to be pretty good at math and science. Um, so through the education, there was definitely a lot of math and science. <laughs> um, and on the job training, I mean, th things that most of us are kind of naturally good at these days, like computer skills and things like that. Um, you need to have a pretty solid basis in like Microsoft Excel, Microsoft Word, you know, th things that I think most of us kind of <clears throat> are used to these days using in our day-to-day -day lives. What would you say is a challenge you face, whether it's in your current job or just on your pathway to where you are, some of the things that you've come across that have challenged you? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I think one of the big challenges that a lot of pharmacists will talk about over the last uh, decade or so is pharmacists trying to come into the light as medical providers. Um, there's only a handful of states in our country that do recognize pharmacists as medical providers, um, but there's a lot going on in the legislation um, and people working to try to get pharmacists recognized. And the value of being recognized as, as a medical provider is so that pharmacists could actually work more independently and um, be paid for their services by insurance companies. So this gets into kind of more of the business side of things, but basically right now, as it stands in New York, pharmacists can't be paid directly for our services. So um, like when you pick up a prescription at, at CVS or wherever, um, you're actually, your insurance is paying for the filling of that medication. They're basically just paying for the medication. So when the pharmacist comes out and answers your questions, helps you find something in the store, calls your doctor to deal with a drug interaction or something, that's technically an unpaid service. It's not billable. Um, but in the states where pharmacists are medical providers, those services are billable and the insurance can, can pay for those. So that's, that's definitely a challenge, um, especially kind of as you progress further in pharmacy education and like doing the residencies and everything, it's almost like the skill set starts to outgrow what we can do in New York State. So, so that's been a little bit of a challenge, I think. For time, Jane, I'm gonna ask, have you ask your last question. Okay. Um, were there any classes you took in middle school or high school that could connect with your current job? Yeah, definitely. So I think I kind of touched on that in the beginning, right? Um, for me, like the light bulb went off when I was taking AP biology in high school. Up until then, I actually kind of thought I wasn't great at math and science. Um, to me, those were like my weaker areas. But once I took that class, I realized, whoa, I really like this. So even if it's not my strongest area, it's worth working harder at this to do something that I really enjoy rather than saying, hey, I've always been good at, you know, reading and writing and English classes, so I'm just going to take that path. But it's me, this inspires me, so that's what I'm going to work harder at and get better at it until I can do it. <laughs> so it definitely, it was, it was definitely AP biology for me. So my last question is, is there something that you think people should know or you would like people to know, whether it's students or just people in general about pharmacy or being a pharmacist that they might not know otherwise? Oh, there's lots of things. Uh, <laughs> I hope I already touched on some, but um, I think I would, for the students, like 
like I said, I never, I, I always thought that I wasn't great at math and science. So I really, I had heard about pharmacy as a career and all I heard was you have to be good at chemistry. And I thought I wasn't good at chemistry. So I really just like pushed it aside and I was like, I can't do that. Like that's definitely not an option for me. So I, I think my advice would be to really talk to someone who's in the field that you're interested in and truly find out the ins and outs of it. Because yes, I did have to take chemistry in school. I had to take a lot of chemistry, <laughs> but in my day-to-day -day job, I don't use chemistry, you know? So it, it's one of those things where it, it's always best to talk to someone who's actually doing it and get a real handle on, on these careers that you're interested in before you make a decision that, that something's not for you. Great. As we come to the end of our time, Dr. Persico, anything else you'd like to share for students that will be watching this? I don't think so, but definitely feel free to email me if you do have any questions. I'm happy to talk about it. I obviously talked a lot. I really like my job and, and I'm happy to talk about it more. Great. Well, thank you so much for your time. We truly appreciate you taking the time and sharing this information that students can learn from. So thank you. Yeah, thank you.